Over the past decade, stealth technology has allowed our planes to take the fight directly to the enemy, wreaking havoc deep behind enemy lines while staying safe under the radar. The F-117 Nighthawk was the world's first stealth bomber. Hidden from radar, it struck its targets before the enemy could even think about hiding. The next generation of stealth bomber was the B-2. That destroyed key targets in Afghanistan and Iraq before conventional aircraft took over the fight. The idea was, if you can't be seen, you can't be hit. Well, not quite. With limited mobility and lack of speed, stealth aircraft of today have no air-to-air -air combat capability. If it ever comes down to a dogfight, it's game over. In fact, under any serious attack, they are unable to retaliate, as the world saw when a U.S. stealth bomber was shot down during the Serbian conflict. But a huge team of aeronautical geniuses have now created a jet fighter that's so cutting edge, the first fully functional plane has only just rolled off the production line. This is the Joint Strike Fighter, the most feared stealth aircraft ever developed. It's a supersonic plane that travels nearly twice the speed of sound, and it loads up like a bomb truck with the world's deadliest air-to-ground weapons. It's designed to deliver pain to the enemy. We've done the best job that we can to give the most lethal weapon system to the warfighter. We can put a tennis court size hole in the ground, or, or we can cover basically a football field with submunitions. The amount of weapons and fusion of sensors and those things that are going to be able to go on on the airplane is going to be a tremendous asset to the pilot. To be able to go out and attack very high value targets, very complicated targets that we can't do today. The JSF is built to penetrate enemy airspace at incredible speeds and deliver air-to-air -air and air-to-ground supremacy. Its unique shape and special coatings have dramatically reduced its radar signature. It packs a weapons payload greater than any other fighter jet. And with state-of-the-art surveillance, you have a hell of a first-strike weapon, able to take out targets before they even know you're there. We can now go into a higher threat environment. We can now go into a stronger set of defenses and execute the mission and bring the pilot home. The JSF has taken a team of designers and engineers from over nine nations working on the biggest military deal in history, worth an estimated $200 billion. Paul Park. Mark Counts and Chris Ashford are the conceptual engineers. It's not just one aircraft they've been making. They've been asked to deliver different versions for different parts of the military. But we've been able to package all these technologies, these capabilities, in a manufacturing approach that can build three versions of the same airplane for really different roles and that to me is the most amazing part they have created a conventional takeoff and landing version for the u.s air force a carrier-based variant for the u.s navy they also made a vertical takeoff and landing jet for the u.s marine corps as a replacement for the long-serving harrier jump jet the biggest challenge designers faced was building an aircraft this size that could take off vertically from the ground even the Harrier's direct lift system couldn't deliver enough power. We, we've designed supersonic capability into the airplane. Uh, our, our limit is Mach 1.6, which is 1.6 times the speed of sound. And reaching speeds this fast requires a pretty big engine. The Joint Strike Fighter uses the world's most powerful single-jet engine 
delivering over 40,000 pounds of thrust. That allows the pilot to make stomach-turning 9G turns at speeds approaching over 1,200 miles an hour, with a force nine times their own body weight pushing down through their heads, all the blood rushes to their feet. If the pilots do nothing, their brains would be starved of oxygen, so they have to learn a special breathing technique just to remain conscious. So, the JSF is smart, sophisticated, and stealthy, but all that doesn't count for much if it doesn't pack a punch. The $200 billion JSF is the world's first supersonic stealth jet fighter. It aims to be both invisible and invincible, with a firepower that can wipe out the opposition both in the air and on the ground and sophisticated intelligence gathering can sense all sorts of dangers. One of the amazing features is a pilot can sit in the cockpit, see all around him, behind him, and even through the floor. With this incredible 360 degree vision, he is able to identify a target extremely fast and take action. But how is this possible? The JSF will utilize some of the most sophisticated surveillance equipment in the world. High-tech cameras will be mounted across its airframe, allowing the pilot to make split-second decisions. So there are six cameras, and there's some very, very fast processing, which integrates those images in real time and presents them to the pilot. This information will be processed directly to the pilot's visor, literally giving him eyes in the back of his head. We chose a wide-angle helmet display, but we integrated it with uh, sensors all around the aircraft that will look out and give you a spherical image of the outside world, and that will project onto your helmet. So wherever the pilot looks, even at night, he gets an infrared image on his helmet. It's the first for this type of uh, fast chance uh, aircraft. But that's not all. Incredibly powerful sensors will turn this jet into an information vacuum cleaner, gathering up critical battlefield data and relaying this information by satellite to other sources. We have sensors all across the leading edge, the big uh, sensor in the radio. We have sent the gas sensors. We have sensors out the trailing edge of the airplane. We have a whole antenna farm across the top of the airplane. So the airplane not only uh, gets information from its own sensors, it can share information and get information from sensors off the airplane. When you have lots of these airplanes flying over the same area, you can basically have a tactical picture for the battlefield commander that you could, you've never had before. And once the intel is in place, then comes the strike. What makes this jet so disturbingly deadly is its vast weapons payload. During the start of a war, it hides a pair of 2,000 pound smart bombs internally to maximize its stealth capability. Well, it can essentially carry every weapon that the, that the normal legacy payload does external, we carry on the inside of the airplane. Now, what's the advantage of being able to carry on the inside of the airplane? Two reasons. Number one is stealth. It gives us the capability to go to war on the first day of the war and be survivable. Number two is drag. Uh, for the same weight payload, we can go further because we don't have the, the drag of the external payload. Carrying 2,000 pound smart bombs up its sleeve, it's capable of taking out command and control threats with ease. When stealth is less important, an additional 15,000 pounds worth of explosives can be hung from its wings. And that's not good for the bad guys below. We can put a tennis court sized hole in the ground or, or we can cover basically a football field with submunitions. If you're talking about the blue 109J, Dan, that's really a bunker buster. So when Saddam's down there under his concrete palace, you know, we can send that penetrator down there and uh, penetrate multiple levels of concrete and dirt and actually get into the interior of that concrete office. The JSF can carry anything from JDAMs to Sidewinders and cruise missiles. These can be used to take out targets 155 miles away. 
We'd like for them to be nothing but hair teeth and eyeballs and not even know we were there. So, just how easy is it to pilot the JSF? Today I've been given a chance to put my flying skills to the test, and fortunately for the good citizens of Texas, it's only on a multi-million dollar simulator. I'm about to take a mission over the Nevada desert. Lending a hand is the JSF fight trainer, Mike Scaff. You can see some bad guys behind you there. Right. Let's do an Emmelman. That means just pull straight up over the top. Okay. Once you get to where you're upside down but going the other way, that's it. Drop that now we've got some bad guys. Push this button up one time. That put him in the shoot list. See that triangle out there on the horizon? Right. The 38 is 38 miles away, and it's the first thing in our shoot list. Okay. And so if, that, if we continue on this heading, we're all set to drop a bomb on that. Oh, fantastic. The simulator uses touch screen and voice control just like the real thing. Can I get one of these for my house? Okay. Now with your thumb out here, push that forward one time. That's selected weapons. Great. There's the weapons on the airplane. And so a picture, kind of an x-ray view from the back and the top. When you heard that threat, right. the airplane is monitoring things around you and it's saying, hey, I detected a threat. Now roll left. Threat. And let's shoot. Right. With this red button here. Pow! We got him. Have you put any kids inside this? We have. A couple of times we put kids in and not taught them anything. They jump in, look at the controls, and we'll come back 15 minutes later and they're shooting people down and flying and fighting and, and saying, hey, you guys messed this up. I need to switch over here. Sometimes we forget we're building this airplane for, for our kids and grandkids. And in fact, most of the pilots that fly the F-35 haven't even been born yet. By the time the JSF rolls off the production lines in 2008, it will be the most feared jet fighter ever seen, giving the enemy nowhere to hide. The best weapon uh, is the one that nobody wants to ever fight. And uh, if that's what we do, then we've succeeded tremendously. This is unprecedented in the amount of stuff that you're trying to get into an airframe uh, in aviation history. It's going to truly change the game. We like to refer to these as game-changing airplanes. It's going to change the game on how we've done tactical combat aircraft support for the troops on the ground. in a manufacturing approach that can build three versions of the same airplane for really different roles. And that, to me, is the most amazing part. They have created a conventional takeoff and landing version for the U.S. Air Force, a carrier-based variant for the U.S. Navy. They also made a vertical takeoff and landing jet for the U.S. Marine Corps, as a replacement for the long-serving Harrier jump jet. The biggest challenge designers faced was building an aircraft this size that could take off vertically from the ground. Even the Harrier's direct lift system couldn't deliver enough power. We, we've designed supersonic capability into the airplane. Uh, our, our limit is Mach 1.6, which is 1.6 times the speed of sound. And reaching... We've done the best job that we can to give the most lethal weapon system to the warfighter. We can put a tennis court size hole in the ground or, or we can cover basically a football field with submunitions. The amount of weapons and fusion of sensors and those things that are going to be able to go on on the airplane is going to be a tremendous asset to the pilot. To be able to go out and attack very high value targets, very complicated targets that we can't do today.
The JSF is built to penetrate enemy airspace at incredible speeds and deliver air-to-air -air and air-to-ground supremacy. Its unique shape and special coatings have dramatically reduced its radar signature. It packs a weapons payload greater than any other fighter jet. And with state-of-the-art surveillance, you have a hell of a first-strike weapon. Dogfight, it's game over. In fact, under any serious attack, they are unable to retaliate, as the world saw when a U.S. stealth bomber was shot down during the Serbian conflict. But a huge team of aeronautical geniuses have now created a jet fighter that's so cutting edge, the first fully functional plane has only just rolled off the production line. This is the Joint Strike Fighter, the most feared stealth aircraft ever developed. It's a supersonic plane that travels nearly twice the speed of sound, and it loads up like a bomb truck with the world's deadliest air-to-ground weapons. It's designed to deliver pain to the enemy. Able to take out targets before they even know you're there. We can now go into a higher threat environment. We can now go into a stronger set of defenses and execute the mission and bring the pilot home. The JSF has taken a team of designers and engineers from over nine nations working on the biggest military deal in history, worth an estimated $200 billion. Paul Park, Mark Counts, and Chris Ashford are the conceptual engineers. It's not just one aircraft they've been making. They've been asked to deliver different versions for different parts of the military. But we've been able to package all these technologies. Over the past decade, stealth technology has allowed our planes to take the fight directly to the enemy, wreaking havoc deep behind enemy lines while staying safe under the radar. The F-117 Nighthawk was the world's first stealth bomber. Hidden from radar, it struck its targets before the enemy could even think about hiding. The next generation of stealth bomber was the B-2. That destroyed key targets in Afghanistan and Iraq before conventional aircraft took over the fight. The idea was, if you can't be seen, you can't be hit. Well, not quite. With limited mobility and lack of speed, stealth aircraft of today have no air-to-air -air combat capability. If it ever comes down to